Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yanyan. Today we're taking up the second segment of God's Nature is Healing. Your body was designed to heal itself. God made it that way. Jesus even said the stomach purifies all food, so we don't need to be taking food out here trying to purify it first and putting it into our body. God just simply says pray over it and watch what happens. We're going to talk about that segment today of the healing nature of God. Join me today. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Glad to have you here today with me. And I just wanted to say a great hi. Thank you so much for the partners that are watching. Thank you for so much that are consistent watchers of the program. You would send offerings now and then, but keep us up in prayer. I'm glad to hear from you. And then also for those who are just watching for the first time, welcome to the broadcast. Glad to have you here. And I would like for you to pray about in the days to come, becoming a partner with me. A partner, I'm not telling you how much to give. A partner just simply says, I'm going to faithfully give. It can start out with a small amount of money and just stay that way. I mean, even if it you seems like a widow's mite to you, God can take all those widow's mites and put them together. But again, I do thank you for those of you again who have been giving and then constantly keep looking at ways you can upgrade and increase your giving. And of course, I have some great givers that give huge amounts of money, but you know what? For them, it's just as easy to give a big amount of money as it is for somebody else to give maybe five or $10 a month. Again, I thank everybody because again, it's, it is not equal amounts, it's equal sacrifice. And sacrifice for one person is $10. Sacrifice for another person might be $1,000. But you know what? Whatever you feel led in your heart, you do that. Because God says you purpose in your own heart what you're going to do, and he'll back it up. If you'd like to become a partner with me, then go to my website, bobyandian.com, and there you'll find a place where you can become a partner. Thank you in advance. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. I began yesterday a series, and it'll continue today. We'll finish it today. But for these two days, I'm going to talk about the fact that God's nature is healing. It's from my book called The Grace of Healing. And this is a chapter out of it. In other words, we're taking here, God's nature is healing. What I'm trying to show you is the very nature of God is he, and he's taken his nature and put it in everything around us. He's put it in the animals. He's put it in the trees. He's put it in everything else. This is his nature that is seen in us. And nowhere do we find that Jesus Christ or God, the father or the Holy spirit is the God that makes us sick. He's the God that makes us well any more than he's the God that makes us sin. There is no verse of scripture saying that because sin and sickness both come from the very same place from Satan himself how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So sin and sickness come from the same place. And so redemption from sin and healing from sickness has to come from the same place also. That is from God himself. Nowhere in the Bible is it declared that he is the God that makes us sick, but we do have he's the God that makes us well. And so Jehovah Rapha is the Lord, our healer, but nowhere is he called the God who makes us sick. Jehovah said, can you is the Lord, our righteousness, but nowhere is it told that he's the God that makes us sin. God will bring us out of it. Now here's the story. Now, this is what all people often say. I know, but you know what? I'm a Christian and I'm sick and God somehow used this sickness to teach me something. Let me say this. Sickness, any, like any, let's put it this way, any oppression in life, any problem that comes in life, the source of that is not God. The source of all your problems is the world, the flesh, and the devil. But while those attacks come against you, can God teach you anything during that time? Yes, he can. The evil that's attacking me, I can begin to take that, look at the scriptures of God, begin to compare the scriptures of God, begin to find out that the word of God says he forgives all of our iniquities, heals all of our diseases, but also says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. If God can deliver me out of this problem, then God can deliver me out of sickness. God can also take the sin I am in right now and show me how to get forgiveness of it. I am the stupid one that fell for sin. God's the smart one that gets me out of it. This world surrounds me with sickness all the time. Have I got sick in my body? Yes. Have I learned things during that time? Yes. But the sickness didn't come from God. I learned in the midst of that problem to trust God more than ever before 
because I understand something that on this side of the, I see a storm on that side, the storm's gonna be over. So many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Every day leads me to a brighter day. And the point of it is during my lifetime, will I have problems? Jesus guaranteed I would have problems. The world will give it to me. Religion gives it to me. Satan comes at me. Even Paul said, those who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but it's not God that sends the persecution. It's Satan, the world world, the flesh, these things bring all these things against us. But in the midst of all of that, God has promised deliverance. Now, if you're going to die in this earth and you might be a martyr, then I'm simply here to tell you God has martyrs rewards and all of that. But until that point right there, God has a plan to bring you out of the problems of life. He always has and always will. And one of them is sickness and disease. God does not send sickness and disease, but he does send healing because there's sickness and disease in this world. Sickness and disease came through the fall of Adam. There was never a a sickness, never a disease in the garden until Adam and Eve sinned and opened up the door for Satan. And in came sickness, in came disease, in came sin, in came all these other things. And God, through the finished work of Jesus Christ, has made a plan for us to get out of it. And there's not a problem Satan can throw into your life, including sickness, that God can't get you out of. So we begin to take a look at what it says about uh, nature around us. We looked at Genesis in the first chapter and pointed out from those verses of scripture there, but that God can be seen in everything around us. He's seen the universe. He's seen in the creation around us, the world around us, all these different things. In Genesis 1 26, it says, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So are uh, the image that God made here is first of all, our spirit. Our spirit is made in the exact image of God. Next of all, our likeness is our body made in the likeness of God. Does God have ears and eyes and hair and all this kind of stuff? Yes, I know people can jump on this and say, but how can you compare that God has a body? The Bible doesn't say that, but he's given body attributes, told about the fact he sits on a throne, told about the fact that he has ears, eyes, these types of things. So I think we're made in his likeness, but again, we don't look exactly exactly like God. And I'm sure if you could see God right now with your physical eyes, you probably couldn't see him, but the Bible gives him these attributes. It's much like this. Does God have ears? Does God have eyes? Do I have ears? Do I have eyes? But do I look like God? No. Do you have ears and eyes? I do too, but we don't look like each other, but we both have attributes and I have the attributes of God. Our spirit was made in God's image, but our body is made in his likeness. God's nature is to heal. And he's placed that nature in nature and he's placed that nature inside of us. Our body filters out poisons through our breath, our sweat, our waste, and then keeps the nutrients from the food. What an incredible body God has given to us. We put food into it and the body has the ability through our breath, sweat, waste, and to keep the nutrients on the inside of us, but dispel the bad things from us. While those nutrients are in our body, or even while the bad things are in our body, our body builds up immunities to them. I think this is very important. I think we clean up too much of our food, filter too much of our water, try to get all the bad stuff out, when really it's the bad stuff that's in there that while it's in our body, we build up immunities to it. I've told a story when I was young, I love Tootsie Roll Pops and Cherry was my favorite. I mentioned that one time a guy sent me a whole bag of them. So please don't do that. I'm still I'm still eating out of that bag of them once in a while. So but again, I remember I'd have them in my mouth. I'd be with my friends. Somebody'd say something funny and I would laugh and blow that thing right out of my mouth. And guess where it landed? On the ground. It might land on an ant pile. It might land on grass. It might land on dirt or whatever. But you know what I did? I just picked it up, took my hands, rubbed it, and stuck it back in my mouth. Today, moms and dads would go nuts. Women would go crazy telling your children, no, you're sticking all that in your body. I can tell you this, through the years, I now have immunities to roly poly bugs and ants and all these other things because I put it in my body. All I'm saying is don't be so naive as to think we have to try to filter everything out here when the body's designed to filter it itself. And while it filters it, and while those bad elements, those things from, from nature are in there, the body builds up immunities to it. How can you build up immunities if you don't stick impurities into your body? Think about that for just a moment. The body was made to filter itself and keep itself well. Here's all the filters that are in the body, the lungs. It filters the air, the liver. 
the kidneys, the appendix and tonsils, the two things that we think probably are unnecessary for so long we thought the appendix was unnecessary. Now we're finding out it could be the key to many diseases because it had poison in it when we took it out. Tonsils, I had my tonsils removed at five years old. I went in a number of years ago to a new doctor because my other doctor went on the mission field. This one took over and he had to go through everything again. He said, what was your first operation on you? I said, removing my tonsils. And under his breath, he said, well, that was a mistake. I said, what do you mean? He said, we found out since then tonsils are very important. God put them in there for a reason. <gasps> Who would have thought? The body builds up its own, own immunities to everyday pollution. The body has the ability to do this. God placed it in there. Our body tries to heal itself from destructive attacks. If harmful bacteria is in our food, we throw up. If we don't throw up, our immune system goes to work and attacks the disease. Our blood contains white cells which attack viruses. Coughing, sneezing, even normal fevers are the way that the body expels harmful attacks. If healing is not God's will, why has God put nature and our body to fight his will. If healing is not God's will, then why doesn't he have nature and our own body just let sickness in? No, he's taught nature and our body to fight sickness. It must be God's will if his nature's placed inside of us. Again, in the Bible, he's called Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. Nowhere in the word of God is he called the God that makes us sick. He's called Jehovah said, kin you, the Lord our righteousness, but nowhere is he called the Lord that makes us sin. Sin and sickness come from the same source and healing and redemption, forgiveness come from the same source. And that is God who forgives all of our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases. His name is healing, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us. He sent his word and heals. The first thing we're told in the word of God, he sent his word and healed them. And that's found in the New Testament too. But also the second thing was God sent his Holy Spirit to heal us. Jesus went about doing good preaching and he preached through his word and cast out devils and healed people through his word. But the second way he healed was the day the Holy Spirit came on him. He ended up going to his own hometown just a few days later and stood there and announced the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to heal. Notice that the spirit was on him to heal. So the word of God was given to Jesus. The Holy Spirit was given to Jesus for healing. When the body cannot heal itself and nature cannot conquer it, God has healing methods beyond nature. Believers can gang up on diseases. If two shall agree on earth is touching anything, we can have prayer meetings, congregational meetings, calling for elders, gifts of healings, working of miracles, but nowhere do we have, we have the gifts of making people sick. Nowhere do we have the gifts of people Again, uh, causing sin. Nowhere, every one of the gifts are to heal, to set free, to deliver, and help get rid of Satan's attacks in our life and bring on the healing power of God. Believers can use the word of God and prayer and spiritual authority. So it comes back to this, sickness does not come from God. Sickness comes from from Satan. It takes human thinking and human religion to come up with the idea that sickness does come from God. You literally have to discredit God, discredit his word, and discredit all of nature around you, which has been sent to help keep you healed and keep you well. When we come back from the break, I'll continue with this point. The book that I'm offering is The Grace of Healing. I know it's going to be a great blessing to you. They're going to announce how you can have a copy for yourself. I'll see you right after halftime. How much faith do I need to be healed? Bob Yandian answers this question and reveals the missing ingredient to the healing you've been praying for, grace. Throughout church history, the doctrines of grace and faith have been taken to separate extremes as they relate to healing. The result is that many believers struggle to receive healing from God. Those on the side of grace deny the need for faith, believing that God only heals a select few. For those who only see a need for faith, the pursuit of healing becomes a legalistic struggle to change God's mind. Pastor Bob takes a different approach with practical biblical teaching that balances both elements of grace and faith. You'll find the healing you've been waiting for when you find the missing ingredient of grace. To order The Grace of Healing, visit bobyandian.com. Remember your birthday parties growing up? You were five, six, seven years old. All your friends came over and they brought gifts saying happy birthday to you. And you tried to act so humble, but you were looking at those gifts because they brought them for you. Let me give you something horrible. What if they all turned around and gave those gifts to each other and then went home and didn't give them to you? Welcome to Christmas. It's his birthday. 
but we give presents to each other whether we need them or not and forget this was his birthday. And what if the wise men would have given their gifts to each other and not to the baby Jesus? They needed that finances because they went off to Egypt for two years, and that's what Joseph used in the time they were in Egypt, then probably started his business on the amounts left over when they got back. Why not give the greatest gift to Jesus, and that is the spreading of the gospel and also the teaching of the Word of God? What if you gave the greatest value gift to a ministry? If there's anything the body of Christ needs today, it's God's Word taught, explained, and revealed. Why not give a Christmas offering this year and give it to Bobby Andy Ministries, because I'm going to use it just for that. Go to the BYM website and find the word donate and give there. And I'll tell you what, I'll appreciate it. And so will those who hear the word of God, because I've got some great vision for this year coming up. Thank you ahead of time. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the word of God. Because of your generosity, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit bobyandian.com and click on partnership. God heals sickness and God heals diseases. And we found that again in the teaching that we're having right here. So the beauty of it is when we look at God's word and look at God's plan and look at God's own nature, we see healing everywhere. And healing is for everyone. You know, when Jesus was healing the sick, it said he healed everybody of everything. There's not one time when anybody ever came to him and says, is it your will that you heal me? And he never looked at him and says, no, it is for everybody else, but not for you. This is how we often look at healing. And healing is looked at today through the sovereignty of God. Listen, the sovereignty of God is for certain individuals and not for others. I can tell you this, salvation is not by the sovereignty of God. God doesn't say to certain people, it's not my will to save you, but it is my will to save you. Neither does he look at some people say, it's my will to heal you, but not to heal you over there. They brought every person, every sickness, every disease. He healed every sickness and every disease among all of the people. And the one case we have where a man came with leprosy, which was the worst of all, the most incurable of all diseases that were on the face of the earth at that time, when that leper came to him said, sir, I know that you can heal me, but will you? And Jesus said, I will. Reached out and touched him. Answered the question there to what we would consider one of the hardest. And man, this one is definitely set toward death. Yet Jesus healed him of that. You say, yeah, but what about once you become a Christian? I like what it says in James chapter five. Is there any sick among you? You know what? If it was healing was by the sovereignty of God, we wouldn't know who it's for and who it's not for. It's for everybody. The forgiveness of sins is for everybody, for sinners and also for Christians. And if you're a Christian, you've committed a sin. If we confess it, he's faithful and just forgiven and cleanse us from any other unrighteousness around it. That is the will of God for salvation and also for fellowship with God as a Christian, but also for healing. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And if they've committed any sins, it'll be forgiven them. Notice how forgiveness of sins and healing of disease go hand in hand with each other. So again, just like Jesus, believers can use the word of God because Jesus again came and by his word, he healed them, but also by prayer and spiritual authority, by working with the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ came and healed by his word, but also he healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's been given to us. The moment I receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I become one with him and his authority is given to me. And then I can begin to take his word just like Jesus did. Go to Isaiah 53. There's so many great, First Peter 2, 24, verses of scripture throughout the book of Acts in Matthew chapter four, all the way, all through chapter nine, it's all a big block right there of healing. In the midst of it, we have the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus taught his disciples how to go and do these things. But again, for Jesus and for us, it's all part of that one plan. And they healed everyone that came and the healings were attached to the forgiveness of sins. It said when Jesus preached the word, many believed in him, but also whenever he healed the sick, it said many believed in him. So we come back to this again, this argument, does sickness come from God? The the answer is no. Sickness does not come from God. If sickness came from God, it would have been in the garden. All right. It was not in the garden. It didn't appear until after Adam and Eve sinned, opened up the door and through their sin, sickness began to come in. That's why again, they're tied together. 
And oftentimes sickness is tied in with the fact that, you know, we've sinned. And uh, Jesus said to that man that was that was raised up that one day, he said, go and sin no more. He said to the woman that was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. And in one case, he said to them, lest a worse thing come on you. So it simply comes back to it again. God does not sovereignly pick who he wants to heal and God does not sovereignly pick who he wants to save. Salvation is for anybody, whoever, whosoever will may come and receive of the waters of life freely. And whosoever will may come and get the, the waters and healing from God also because the same God who forgives our iniquities heals all of our diseases. It takes human thinking. It takes religion to come up with the idea that sickness comes from God. You have to discredit nature around you. You have to discredit the word of God. And you have to often discredit your own body because your body has been built and set by God to separate the bad and send it out through sweat and, and fevers and, and going to the restroom, all those different stuff. And literally it comes back to this. Has God taught nature to rebel against his will? Has God designed your own body to rebel against him? Why do unsaved people call sickness an enemy while it takes a Christian to say, oh no, it's my friend, God gave it to me. No, even the world can see that sickness is an enemy. Why do we fight disease? Why do doctors fight disease and why do they battle cancer? Nowhere does the world consider sickness a friend. Nowhere does the world say that disease is something we need to work with and let's just encourage it. No, they try to stop it. I love one of the, the cancer uh, centers of the United States. They're their cry is in that whole thing to make cancer a past tense thing, to make cancer an over thing that's over. So right now they're looking at that one day it will be a thing of the past. Just like we look back on a lot of diseases that I grew up with that now are no longer even around. They say there's going to come a day cancer will be gone. I can guarantee there'll be many other diseases around and literally they're going to find out that God put it in nature all this time. They're going to find, they're searching constantly through nature, searching constantly through animals, searching constantly constantly into, in plants and all these other things to find it because they know it's out there. God put it there and they know this. And again, we know this because the word of God taught it. If sickness is from God, all medical researchers, all doctors and nurses should be jailed as enemies of righteousness. No, they're working with God's plan. God has nothing against doctors. God has nothing against nurses. They're working with him. Luke should never have written a book or traveled with Paul because why? Paul was an apostle. Luke was a doctor and God put the two together. I'm sure there were times when after Paul ministered to people, Luke came by and showed them some things they could be doing on their own. Luke is the one that wrote, in the book of Acts about the man that suddenly jumped up at the gate, beautiful, and the Bible says that strength came into his ankle bones. Only a doctor would write that. Luke was called the beloved physician. He wasn't the hated physician. He was the beloved physician. Even a title for God is the Lord, our healer, the Lord, our physician. So God is not against doctors. He works with doctors. But any doctor should be smart enough to tell you, I cannot heal you. I find out how nature works. I find out how all these things, ingredients work together. We help put them together and it assists nature so that you can be healed, but they can't guarantee healing any can anytime. God does. God tells you that if you'll believe in him, you will be healed. Now, there's reasons why it doesn't. We may not have time to come into this, but you'll find it in my book again on the grace of healing. If sickness is a gift of God, people even teach this, oh, sickness is God's gift to you and you should treat it as a gift. If sickness is a gift of God, why are you trying to get rid of it? If it's God's will for you to be sick, why do you try to get well? Why do you spend money to get out of God's will when if it's God's will, don't spend any money, just accept it and go ahead and die if you consider that to be God's plan. If sickness comes from God, then sickness is good. You'll find nowhere in the word of God where sickness is good. And here's another thing you'll find out. You'll find no one who is sick that tells you, oh, I love this. It's a wonderful thing in my life. No, they're trying their best to get rid of it. If sickness comes from God, then sickness is good. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Oh, you know what that verse tells us? Healing is good. And when we heal, see people get healed, that's good. Next of all, it's God's will to heal everybody. He went about doing good and healing all. It also tells the source of all sickness and disease who are oppressed of the devil. 
Sickness should bring God's glory if it comes from God. If sickness really comes from God when we have it, we should be shouting and rejoicing over the goodness of God. Yet, in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 8, it says, Now when the multitude saw it, that was the paralytic being healed. When this paralytic jumped up, it says, They marveled and glorified God who gave such power to men. If sickness comes from God, we should glorify God in that sickness, thanking him for it. But notice this, no one glorified God till the man was healed. Healing brings the glory of God. And it says, they gave God glory who gave such power to men. This story is also told in Matthew 15, 31 and Luke chapter 23 and verse 13, the story of the paralytic that was healed. Next of all, the word teaches us of God's will for healing. The word teaches us, Matthew 8, 17 tells us, quoting Isaiah 53, 4, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. There's a story that uh, many, many years ago, Billy Graham in his in his magazine they put out each month uh, talked about this. He said he was in India. And while he was in India, he said he took a familiar verse of scripture out of Isaiah 53 and taught salvation from it. But during that time, he went over Mark uh, Isaiah 53, 4. He didn't explain it, didn't say these verses meant sickness and disease because he might not have believed it. But yet Jesus explained it in Matthew 8, 17 and took Isaiah 53, 4 and said he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And so it doesn't say that in the King James, but other translations bring it out because that's what the Hebrew words are. And he pointed out in those verses of scripture, he said later on at the end of many people came down to get see, get uh, saved. He said, but also many people came who were healed. He said, there must be more. Listen to this. He said this, there must be more to Isaiah 53 than we have known about. It was, it's the very verse that Jesus Jesus quoted in Matthew 8, 17, where he was healing the sick all day long and he was healing every sickness, every disease and every person that came to us and then quoted a redemption scripture, Isaiah 53, 4, showing what? That sickness and disease is tied in with also the forgiveness of sins and they're all covered in that verses of scripture. What are we saying here? Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Jesus took our sicknesses and our curses on the cross. He took our sicknesses and our sins to the cross. And like nature, trees and plants around us, on the cross, Jesus absorbed our sickness and breathed out healing. This is what nature does. Nature, again, takes the carbon dioxide we breathe out and then nature breathes out oxygen back to us. On the cross, Jesus breathed in our sickness and breathed out our healing. He breathed in our sin and he breathed out our righteousness. And that's what he did on the cross. The two are attached together. We like Jesus need to get angry at the works of the enemy. Why? Because sickness is our enemy, a trespasser on God's property. We need to rebuke sickness and command it to leave our bodies. Why? Because it's been placed under our feet. When Jesus sent out the disciples and sent them out to minister, he gave them power over sickness and disease to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the enemy. To tread means to walk on. And it literally means that Satan and his power have been placed under our feet. I can't brag on that. Jesus gave it to me. And when the people saw Jesus heal, they marveled that God had given such authority to men. But he's given that authority to you. Not for you to brag on, not for you to walk around saying how great you are, but to give all glory, honor, and respect to the one who gave us that authority. His name is Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching today. And I trust that you'll buy my book on the grace of healing. It's a great blessing to you. And I will see you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.